Well hello and welcome back to the channel and as you can see today we're actually back up in Scotland and uh, Adam Gibbs has joined me for uh, a week here. We're going to go around and scout a few areas and then we're heading up further up back up to Harris and Lewis to go and do uh, another workshop up there and then we've got an, uh, another week after that. So today we've just come to this, uh, we're, we're basically heading for Mull and we've come across on the Corran Ferry and we're heading towards the other ferry towards Mull and we're just past this waterfall here i will just trying to spin you around this one here you can just see there absolutely beautiful just noticed that on the side of the road there and I thought it was worth stopping and taking a shot so I'm trying to get set up for this I'm kind of finding where I am with it and seeing what works we've got this beautiful autumn colour still hanging around so I think there's definitely a shot here and, and as you can see it's not the brightest of days anyway it's quite dreary and quite damp so we've taken the opportunity when it stopped raining and we've got a nice subject to kind of grab this shot now um, before they, it gets dark because it's already about getting towards half past two and as you can see it's already getting dark so really want to get something in the bag today because all we've really done is travelled so anyway I'm gonna get this sorted and hopefully start to walk you through what I've got lined up so hopefully guys you'll be able to see this and I'm just going to show you now what I'm looking at. So hopefully what you'll see is I've got it lined up in a square format and I just find that this is working quite well for this because I want to kind of bring the whole thing into the centre of the image because there's quite a lot of mess either side. Now what you'll see in my square frame is on the left side I've got a beautiful fern off to the left and I've also got a piece of autumn foliage just on that left side I really like the look of that as well as trying to balance that with the autumn colour at the top of the frame there you've got those branches of this oak tree leaning in from the right hand side of the frame there as well I've got my focus point set on a rock just in the middle of the stream there as you can probably see from the frame the the stream actually comes down in a Y shape like that, so it comes down from two separate areas. You've got those beautiful mossy boulders either side of the, uh, the frame there as well. And it just looks really, really nice. Now what I'm having to do is, obviously because of the, uh, there's a little bit of breeze every now and then, and it's moving that piece of foliage off to the left. So I'm having to be really kind of conscious as to when I take a shot because obviously what I want to do is slow this water down enough to give it a bit of motion. Now, normally I go around a quarter of a second, a fifth of a second, somewhere around there, but actually with this, I'm finding that one over one sixth of a second is working better for me. It just looks a lot nicer, probably because of the speed that the water's falling down here. It's gonna grab another shot. What I'm trying to do as well with this square format is lead the water off down towards the left corner of the frame so it kind of leads out quite well and then your eye follows up through the frame. Now what I'm doing as well is making sure it's lowered enough so that I'm not getting the sky in the frame as well. So I'm just going to grab this shot now. I'm going to try it without a polarizer first and I may put a polarizer on and see if it makes any difference and enhances any of these greens and makes them more punchy but it's already quite punchy as it is but if it if it does look significantly different I'll pop both of those images up now for you I'm really glad I got that shot in the bag because at least it's the start to the trip and uh, because this weather's been so uh, let's say rubbish um, it's followed us over from Vancouver Island because we didn't have great luck there either 
only got one day of real photography before I had to come home. It's kind of like this in Scotland, but you kind of expect it really. But yeah, it's, it's been great to at least get a start with this and get a shot in the bag. And then we can hopefully, hopefully tomorrow, it kind of uh, changes and we get a bit better weather at least. If it could just hold off with the rain, as you can see, it's starting now. So uh, yeah, at least it's a start and I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Well, good morning. So last night we kind of walked through this area. Now, we'd, obviously, you saw that first waterfall that we'd uh, photographed on the way to Mull. We're now on Mull, but for the last couple of days, it's done nothing but really rain, and it's been quite difficult to get anything done. So uh, actually, we, we got a little dry spell last night, but by the time the rain had cleared out, it was getting dark in here. So it was quite difficult to get anything, but I noticed this shot last night and we're actually at a place called Aros Park and that's obviously Aros Waterfall and I haven't seen too many shots of this. Now, it's quite a difficult scene because obviously it's a big waterfall but there's nothing really behind it. There's a few pine trees there but we've got power lines going over the top which obviously aren't the best and also um, there's, as I say, it's just lots of grey sky and lots of white areas, which doesn't really make for a fantastic image. So what I noticed last night is actually a rock in the centre of the waterfall at the lower section, and I just want to pick out that detail, really. Um, I noticed, I love the way that the water's kind of hitting it and fanning out over the top of it, and then you've got all the rapids around it. So I've picked out a square crop. Now what I'm going to do is get you to the back of the camera so you can see what I'm actually seeing and I'll walk you through how I've lined it all up. So what you should see is, I'll press record on the back of here now. Obviously I've got the 100 to 200 lens in on because I want to get right in quite tight on this rock which is almost in off to the left of my frame. You can just see it now. Um, oh, well you could see it if it hadn't switched off. Just let me switch this back on again there we go right so what you should see that rock that I was talking about which was in the middle of the waterfall over there with the water falling over it I've used this square crop because I want to eliminate all the rest of the clutter that are either side of the, the falls themselves but what I've done is, is set that rock off to the left the upper third and as you can see my grid lines there I've got it on the intersection of that top left third and the other rocks below are kind of going down into a funnel shape either side which is funneling you down into the bottom of the frame I love the way that the water's kind of flowing in down both sides there so I'm focused just below that rock actually on that lower intersection of the third there as you can just see, that's where my focus point is. I'm at ISO 100, F16 at an eighth of a second, and I'm just one stop under just to make sure I don't blow any of the detail out in that water. Now, obviously, being here as well, we're really quite close to the waterfall, so I'm having to make sure that I keep my lens nice and free from any spray. I'm also going to grab case polarizer as well and uh, pop that on just to make sure I can get rid of any of the glare on the rocks. I'm going to try both. I'll probably put the polarizer on, take a bit of that glare off and then try it with just as it is. And then at least I've got both of those images I can mess around with, but sometimes the glare works, sometimes it doesn't. It might just kind of bring more attention to the texture of the water that's fallen if I eliminate that sort of uh, glare right in the in the middle of the frame so I'm just gonna make sure that's nice and dry now and then pop the polarizer on I'm using the case revolution filters because you can see how easy that was just to click them on there and 
as I turn that you can see the glare just coming off those rocks and it just darkens them down quite nicely there so I'm gonna grab a shot like that eighth of a second again that's made it that's made it two stops under so I'm just gonna raise my ISO with that filter on and then take the shot two second timer just to avoid any shake at all and then see what that looks like so I'll take a couple of these and then what I'll do is uh, take the filter off and just take it without and see how it turns out so really quite simple shot but it was a nice detail shot I wanted to get hopefully the shots turned out and if it has here's the shot Now this was another scene that yesterday I really liked the look of and I'm a big proponent of, I've told you in the past, if something interests you, spend a little bit of time to try and work it out and see what you can make of it. And it's one of those scenes where I can see there's potential, but it's 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 really quite busy, that's the problem I've got, is there's, there's beautiful colour in these um, oak branches behind me here. And I really like the water and the texture in the water and I want to kind of somehow combine those two, two elements but as you can see beyond the branch and further into the background it's really chaotic and quite busy and I'm not sure it'll work as an image but I'm going to walk up and down here to kind of try and find something that actually works and simplify it somehow Hopefully I'll find something because there's definitely, I know there's an image here somewhere. I'm just not sure where at the minute, but uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a walk, try and work it out, and then I'll, I'll get back to you if I can make some sense of this. Do you know, I've been, I've been walking around just with the camera in my hands, and I've kind of come to the decision that the background's really messy with this scene, and really there's nothing I can do about it. But rather than walking away from the shot, I'm going to take the image anyway. I'm going to kind of use this tree on the left hand side and just kind of pull myself back from the scene slightly so that the background's not quite as, in the, as prominent in the frame and just use those branches that are hanging over and this one limb that's hanging over the top here is the top of the frame and almost frame the water that's coming down towards me here. I'm going to set that up, see how it looks, and then show you the back of the screen, just kind of walk you through what I'm seeing. But I'm seeing as it, it has a 4 by 3 sort of aspect ratio, incorporating this tree and maybe some of this uh, foliage that's along the bottom here, and just using that texture of the water and the colour to my advantage, because we're really lucky in here today because there's no wind whatsoever so that allows me to play with the shutter speed of the water and not worry too much what's happening up in the uh, canopy of the trees here so there's not going to be too much movement so it's an ideal day for those sort of shots so yeah I'm going to set it up and then see how it looks because I definitely think it's worth trying Right, hopefully what you're seeing is I've, I've lined this shot up. And yeah, as I say, it's messy, but I'm gonna have to kind of work around that because there's something that attracts me to the shot, so I'm gonna take it anyway. Now what I've got is, if you can see this tree off to my left here, I've got that over to the left of my frame there. Obviously four by three aspect ratio because I want to get the maximum amount in as possible. 
I've got the branch of this oak tree with all the colour over the top of the frame so it's almost arcing over the top. We've got this cedar on the other side of the uh, river here which is just coming in, the foliage is just coming in on that right hand side of the frame. Obviously the water's coming down from almost the middle of the frame there and leading its way out of the right, the bottom right hand side of the frame. Now what I've noticed here is to get the kind of shutter speed I really like down here I'm at around half a second somewhere around there is what's working for me and that's because of the speed that this water is traveling there's obviously over this last few days we've had a lot of rain coming through so the water is thundering through here so around about half a second somewhere like that seems to be working best for me um, F16 ISO 160 and I've got a case polarizer on again and now obviously this time of year with the autumn color and everything the polarizer is the main thing that I use out on the field it's the most important to me so you'll see why here I'll point it out now so if I'm looking through here now what you should be able to see looking at that water you can see how much reflections on that water now it's fine on the foliage which is down at the bottom of the frame here but I find that the glare that I'm getting back off the water is quite distracting so that's why I'll use a polarizer mainly in this sort of condition here so as I turn that you'll just see that water darken and look how much glare when I turn it off it's kind of too distracting so if I turn that back now you'll see that water really darken down and it'll take off all of those reflections Now with that in mind, the way I'm visualizing this scene, although it's, I keep saying it's really quite busy, if you see that portion where the, the rapids are coming down in the back here, in that sort of over to the left hand side of the frame towards the middle, just in that sort of middle area there underneath that branch, the way I'm visualizing editing this is to lighten that area up in that center of the frame back there just to give the viewer, viewer's eye some sort of lead through into the scene because I want to kind of, although it's busy back there, I want to kind of lead the viewer into that. But in order to make that work for me, I think lightening that area back there will just kind of add something, a little bit of a dynamic to the frame. It's just one of those things I think sometimes we go to go to a place and you kind of work on a scene you know there's something there but you're not sure how to make it work and sometimes yeah you've just got to tie just got to take the image and and kind of hope that it turns out I'd rather do that than not take the image at all and kind of wonder what it would have looked like so I'm just gonna take this image I know there's something here and hopefully it works out and here's that shot. guys really nice to be back up in Scotland and on Mull something a little bit different nice playing with water and the fall color here fantastic and it's also important hopefully you've seen how important it is to always take that shot because if you believe there's a shot there I always say just take that shot because you'll regret it if you don't you might not get back to an area something might change the scene might change so it's always worth grabbing that shot thanks very much for watching guys i'll see you on the next video soon take care
Bye-bye.